Welcome. In this video, I'm going to share my method of using Obsidian to develop my thinking and understanding of things. If this sounds interesting, please tag along and let's get into the video. Hey på er allihopa! My name is Andreas. I'm a teacher from Sweden and I like to learn things. On this channel, I share things related to learning, education and personal development and lots of other things that interest me. Uh, if this sounds interesting, please like and subscribe and let's get into the video. So I've been having this problem. I read, I watch things, I listen to things, but it doesn't make me smarter. I don't remember more. I'm still as stupid as I was yesterday, even though I spent an hour reading and an hour watching series and listening to podcasts on my way to work. Whatever. Much of what I consume is just lost. I remember bits and pieces, but I don't really have like a whole view and I don't feel any better off because of it. I sort of think this is a problem and I've been sort of trying to figure out how to solve it. And I think a key aspect is thinking more about it, what I'm consuming. And uh, I built this sort of process around this and I thought I would like to share this process with you. And I sort of came to the conclusion that if I want to sort of remember more and be able to use information I consume, I need to spend time thinking about it. I need to spend time with the information in my head and I need to do things with it so I can later use it in everyday life. Uh, now, what do I mean by that? Well, I think there are two key aspects to thinking. I think I need to force myself to recall the information, build my memory of it so I will remember it later. And I think I need to make connections to other things I know. And by doing those two things, I sort of ingrain the information in my brain. There is lots of evidence on effective studying that these are two techniques that are very powerful. Recall and elaboration, sort of connecting it to other ideas. Now, I've sort of developed a system that is loosely based upon the subtle casting method, if you're familiar with that. When it comes to developing our thinking, uh, I think writing things down is key. Uh, writing is pretty much the same thing as thinking, but more effective. Because you can only hold like one or two thoughts in your head at the same time. But on paper or on a computer, you could hold like infinite amount of thoughts at the same time. You can write it down and that's really great. So when you sort of want to develop your understanding and thinking about something, writing should really be a key aspect of it. Because writing makes your thoughts stay put on paper. You, can, you don't need to remember everything by brute force. You can write it down and leave it. And writing also lets you edit your thoughts. If you write something, then you can sort of look at it and, and see like, okay, maybe this isn't like the best explanation. Then you can edit it and sort of add to it or remove something. And you can write it down and as you learn more, you can go back to old writing and look like, okay, that, that wasn't correct and you can remove it. And so by writing things down, you sort of think both more long term and instead of just doing it in your head all the time, you sort of build and hone your skill at it over an extended amount of time. So when you're trying to learn something or just understand something, writing should really be a key too. Now, another really important aspect is what should you be writing about? And here I think the habit of capturing comes in. And when we read stuff, you shouldn't try to remember everything. You should try to remember bits and pieces that you sort of find interesting. But like when you're reading something, it's not always easy to just put the book down and just think about it for half an hour because that's really not what you're reading. You're reading, you wanna go forward. At least that's how it is for me. So I like to think that if you want to sort of really ingrain it, you need to capture the information and sort of think about it later. So what I do is that I, for me, when I do this process, it's mostly about reading. And I highlight things on my Kindle. And then as I go through my notes at a later state, then I force myself to recall Okay, why did I highlight it? What was the context? What was important? I forced myself to recall it and then I use Obsidian to create sort of hooks and, and connections between this concept and other things. I also do this with my phone but not as frequently. 
like if I'm watching a cool documentary, then I could jot down some notes at my phone and then at a later stage I go through it. But the main idea is that you should you shouldn't try to think about everything right away. You should capture it, save it, and then when you have time, sit down for like half an hour and sort of really try to write an explanation about it. Then your understanding of the subject will really develop over time. Now I would like to go over to the computer and show you how I use Obsidian to think about things, how I write about it, how I flush out my ports and how I capture everything. So let's take a look. Welcome back. Now at the computer I'm going to show you how I use Obsidian to develop my thinking and to think properly about things uh, by writing about it. So what I tend to do is that I use this program called Obsidian and this is one aspect of Obsidian. So Obsidian is a note-taking tool that lets you link notes together and here you can see I have notes like there's a note and it's linked to all these different notes. Here are a few notes and you see they are linked together and the link looks something like this. So here is a few notes about evidence-based learning. These are other notes and since they're in spare brackets they are linked together so I can jump between these nodes. And so that's basically what Obsidian is. Now Obsidian has a lot to offer when it comes to thinking about things because you can spend time uh, both writing. So here I have some, some notes about what an ideology is and here I have some thoughts about it. What's amazing with Obsidian is that it really encourages you to link nodes together which we determined earlier were an important aspect of uh, connecting what you new information with things you already know is an important aspect of thinking about it. Uh, so Obsidian has a few really good features and I thought I was going to show them. So I showed you the linking things and they have some other impressive features as well. So let's take Dunning crew graphic. So here as you can see you can also add tags to Obsidian which makes it easier to search. So if I would like to search for uh, psychology, that's Swedish for psychology. Uh, then you can see I can find tags with that in it. And that means I can jump to other notes really easily. Obsidian also lets you search for anything. So if I were like, wanted to search like motivation, I had a tag about motivation. But you can see I can also search about just different aspects about the text about motivation. Now Obsidian has a ton of features. I really isn't an expert on it. I just want to show you how I use it to think. So let's get into that instead. So what I usually do is that I use Kindle notebooks. Here we have a few books. I'm reading the Bible at the moment, actually. Uh, but let's take this uh, Man's Search for Meaning, which I read a while ago. So what I usually do is that I go in to my Kindle notebooks and I sort of find the, the highlights that I thought were the most important ones and the ones where I remember the most. Then what I do is that I copy a note and then I go back to Obsidian. I create a new note. So I have this snippet that looks like this. And then what I do is that I usually add a note like this. And then I add some tags. This seems to have something with meaning. Then I add tags. And then under here on thoughts, and I thought I was going to show you instead of writing something out, I tend to write everything that I feel about it. So here is a lot of notes that I gathered from a book that I thought were like in the same ballpark. And then I try to write my thoughts. And as I write out my thoughts, I try to link what I'm writing. So this is related to Jeremy Peterson. This was read, related about another note, which I wrote about seek to, seek to be useful, not happy, feel of you. So I try to link notes that I have written earlier together with the subject. And this sort of allows me to build like a bigger view of the note. And sometimes what I also do is that when I have this note, when there are just short notes, I don't tend to bother, but sometimes I try to write a note in my own words and I try to explain, so here I haven't done any links, but I try to like explain what the note means to me as I write it out. And this forces me to both recall what was it that I was reading about and it forces me to connect it to other things. So like the program encouraged me to do the things that I established were good for thinking. Uh, I try to make these thoughts as explicit explanatory as possible. I really want to understand what I'm writing if I were to read this later. And what's great with this is as you build more and more notes, you tend to connect them with each other. If I connected one thing to like one note, let's say I connected 
the role of memory when understanding to understand to illusion of competence, then I can go in and read about illusion of competence and see what that is connected to, the Dunning Kruger effect. Then I can sort of wor work my way back around and sort of create notes to all the notes and sort of make this web more intricate. Oh well, anyways, that was a little bit about how I use Obsidian. Maybe this wasn't the most clear video, but I'm learning. And if this is interesting and you leave some feedback, then I'll try to get better. So thank you for listening for this long. And if you stayed up until now, I'm really impressed. Thank you. I'm just starting out and uh, your help is very much appreciated. Uh, please leave some feedback and bye-bye. Uh, Hello, how are you?